going to be able to respond and we don't want to miss that. Um, well, thank you. Yes, like she said, my name is Jocelyn Puckett and I teach in Edmond. This is my fourth year teaching and I do teach fifth grade math and science, which I love. Um, I was introduced to Ag in the Classroom by my mom. She's been involved with it for quite some time. And so I'm really thankful to be able to experience some of that for myself now. Um, and I'm going to teach you about Google Classroom today. I know some of you feel like you've been pushed off the technology cliff because of the way that things are now. So I hope that this is something that helps you feel more comfortable with the idea of using it in your classroom and you learn some things that that you can use and are useful to you. Um, I chose the Temple Grandin lesson that you can find on the Ag in the Classroom page. And we're going to take that and kind of dissect it and pull the activities out. And I'll show you ways that you can digitize those lessons. So I see that someone asked uh, what the classroom code is. So I'm actually not going to have you join a classroom. I'm just going to demonstrate for you how you would create a classroom and then what how you would create content that you could post into that. Does that make sense? Whoever asked that question, you can ask something else if you need to. Um, and so you're not, you don't really have to do anything on your end except for just watch and ask questions. Um, I didn't want you to have to try to man two different screens at once. And so hopefully this will still be helpful for you that way. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And Audrey, did you want to do the polls now or did you want to do them later? I will pull them up for you right now. Here we go. Awesome. So if everyone will go ahead and answer the um, poll for Jocelyn, that will help her know how to take the uh, workshop to be best help you. We're a little over halfway finished, it looks like. So everyone's getting their answers put in. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end it and we will share the results. Perfect. All right, well, good. Looks like we have a mixture of all, huh? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And we're going to start in Google. So I've already signed in. And we're going to access classroom by going to this button here that will pull up a menu for us. And then we have a classroom button that we will click on. And you can see that I already have several classrooms made, but if you haven't used it in the past, then yours won't look like this. But the way that you create a class is just by going to this plus sign right here. It will give you two options. Since we're starting from scratch, we're going to create a class and it will tell us to name it. We're going to name it Ag in the Classroom. We can add a section, a subject, and a room number, but we don't need that right now. It's not necessary for us. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Create. And there it is. It's going to automatically assign a theme right in here. And you can change that theme by clicking Select Theme. You can search through all of their options here. And um, you can even upload your own photo to go here. It's also going to have your class code. This is the easiest way for your students to join your class. So they will need to go to Google Classroom and then click the plus sign and join a class. They won't have the option to create a class. And um, if you want to make that larger, you just click this little square here and it'll blow that up. And then we see that we have four tabs here at the top that will help us navigate around your classroom. 
So here we have the stream. We can think of this as like a news feed on Facebook. And so here I can type announcements to them. Since we're gonna learn about Temple Grandin, I'm just gonna say this week. We'll learn about Temple Grandin. And I can choose who I want that to post to. I can post to multiple classes, but I only wanna choose this one for right now. I can also choose uh, specific students that I wanna send that to. I can make attachments, but for right now, that's all I really need to communicate to them. So I'm gonna send that out just like that. One tip that I would suggest, this is one of my personal preferences. You don't have to do this, but I like to go to the settings and I like to go to classwork on the stream and I change it to hide the notifications because I like for my stream to be strictly for communicating with my students and sending out announcements. I don't like for it to be clouded with all of the classwork because the classwork has its own section where they can view that. So that's just a preference of mine. You don't have to do that, but it's a little tip. So that's the stream. The next one is classwork. We're actually gonna skip over that one temporarily because we're gonna spend the bulk of our time there. We're going to go to the people tab next. Under the people tab, you will see yourself as a teacher. You have the option to add co-teachers if you need to do that. And then you also will see your students here once they're added. You will also see your class code. Um, that they can use to join and then you can also have them join by email. So that's the people tab. And then you have the grades. So obviously I just created this, this class from scratch and so there are no students in here right now, but this would pull up just like a spreadsheet or just like a, a grade book. So it would have students listed on the side and then your assignments across the top with your grades filled in there. And so that, those are those tabs. So classwork, that's where we're gonna spend the majority of our time. So I'm gonna show you some ways that you can create some activities for them to do here. And um, let's see, the first thing I wanna, wanna show you how to create is a topic. We're gonna think of topics like file folders. So I find them very useful for students specifically because they don't have to wade through a lot of things. They can easily find assignments and topics really quickly. So since we're talking about Temple Grandin today, I'm going to create a topic called Temple Grandin. And there it is. So anything that I create today during this workshop, I'm going to tell it to go here so that we can keep it all together. So I'm gonna pull up the Temple Grandin lesson. It looks just like this. The first part of it has some background information and all of that good stuff. And I'm gonna scroll down to activity one. So in this activity, the first part of it, they tell the kids to watch a video. They want us to watch a video and then they want us to discuss what it would be like to think in pictures. So if I'm imagining that I'm doing this as a remote lesson, or maybe they're doing it as morning work, but I wanted it to be digital, then this is what I might do for that. I'm gonna copy this link, and then I'm gonna go back to our classroom. I'm gonna click Create. And I think I want to do this as a question, since it's more of a discussion type post. So I'm going to choose question and I'm going to say, what do you think it would be like to think in pictures? And I can add instructions here if I want to and maybe give them a requirement of how many sentences they have to use and all of those good things. And now I need to be able to attach the video. And so when you see this little paper clip here and the add button, that's what we want. And we are specifically using a link. So I'm going to click that. 
And then I just paste that right in there and add it and it'll pop that YouTube video right inside of that. Um, I can also choose the method of how they answer. I could make it multiple choice if I wanted to. It doesn't make sense for what we're doing here. So I'm gonna leave that as a short answer. Over here, you'll see a list of options. We can assign it to multiple classes at once. We can assign it only to specific students. So if you only had certain students missing certain days, then you could make a digital form of that and only assign it to them. I can change the point value. I can make it ungraded. I can also assign a due date. So let's say that it's due tomorrow. And then topic is really important for us so that they all stay together. So I selected Temple Grandin for that. And then these are preferences. Um, students can reply to each other. I normally don't let them do that because they can be a little bit ornery as some of you know. And so unless uh, you're doing remote learning and then you go over the expectations for that, I normally just keep it off if we're in the classroom. And so then we just ask it. That's our first thing. It shows up right in our simple Grandin topic like we told it to do. And so that is the first part of that activity. The second part of that activity is a vocabulary activity. So they use the Freyer model to learn these vocabulary words. And this is what that looks like. So I would recommend maybe creating a slide and making this template for them to type into. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we want to create something again. We used question last time, but this time I want to make an assignment. So I'm going to choose assignment. I'm gonna call it vocabulary because that's the activity that we're doing. I can type instructions here if I want to, but I'm gonna leave that off for now. And then if I already had this created, I would click add and I would find it wherever it was stored. So if it was stored on my computer, I would choose file. If it was stored in my Google Drive, if it's something that someone shared with me through Google or something that I created in Google, then it would be in my drive. But in this case, I don't have it prepared, so I'm gonna create it right now. So I'm gonna create a slide. It's going to just bring up a blank slide for me and I'm going to click on that so that I can edit it. And then I like to start with a clean slate. So I click on the outside of this box and just click delete or backspace. It'll take it right off of there for me. And I'm gonna make a title slide. So I'm gonna, I clicked background. I'm going to choose a color. Any color will do. And then done. And there's no, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. This is just a quick way that I might make a title slide. I'm gonna to go to shapes because I wanna give it the illusion that it has a border. So I'm gonna choose a rectangle, maybe. And I'm gonna draw that across my screen. And then I can click it and drag it all around and I wanna line it up so that the red lines cross each other, Ooh, both directions. Perfect. And then just for the sake of time, I'm just gonna make this really quick. I'm going to put a text box on top of it because your shapes are not automatically going to have text boxes. So you'll have to put those in over the top. And I'm gonna call this vocabulary. I can make this bigger. I can align it center it and oh I can also spell correctly <laughs> and then we can line this up this direction also so that's not super fancy but it's a quick way to make a title slide I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to click duplicate. And that's going to make a copy of what I just did. So I don't have to go back through the first two steps again. And so now what I can do, 
I'm just going to go ahead and erase this to start with a clean slate again. And I want to make that template that they showed me for the Freyer model. So the first thing I want to do is find my lines. And I'm going to draw a line. It kind of shows you where the middle is. Ooh. So click it here and then drag it down to there. And we will do one the other way. So now we have it divided into fourths. And now we need that circle that goes in the middle, just like this. So we'll go to shapes again. And there's my circle. I can click and drag it so that it is lined up both ways with those red lines. And so now I just need the text boxes because the shapes don't automatically have those in them. So we have to put them on top. So here I would have a text box. And on this one, we say definition. And I can even just copy this text box. Ooh. And I can paste it, drag that over here. And we want that one to say facts, characteristics. And I can paste another one to put down here. For the examples. And then I can paste one more to put down here. And this would be non examples. And we can move those wherever we want them to go. I need to put another text box right in here for the word. We're going to have our first word be cattle. I can change the size of that. I can change the font of that. And I can center it. And then we need text boxes for them to be able to type into. So we're going to insert text box. And I can just copy that and paste it in every single one. And sometimes I even like to type in them and say, like type here so that they know exactly where I want them to be editing. So that's an example of that. And we can use the duplicate button again by going to edit and duplicate. And it will make an exact copy of that. And so then all we have to do is go in and change our word. So maybe this on this one, we want it to be combine. So that's a, that's a way that you could make that uh, for your model digital. So that was all for activity one. We are going to move on to activity two. Let me show you that. Activity two in this lesson wants us to compare inventors. So they have a reading page for Temple Grandin. And then they have this timeline. There's a reading page for John Deere and then another timeline and then a Venn diagram of them comparing both of them. So the way that I would make this digital is I would actually take screenshots of all of these. And the way that you would do that is different depending on what your computer is. So if you're on a Mac, the easiest way to do it is to hit shift command four all at once. So shift command four. If you were using a Windows computer, usually you just search in the little start button for the snipping tool. And that will be how you can access your screenshot tool. So I'm on a Mac right now, so I'm going to click Shift Command 4. And you see, it brings up these little crosshairs. 
And so I'm gonna click and drag it across exactly what I want it to take a picture of. So I'm gonna start up here in the corner. Let's see. Start up here in the corner. We're gonna drag it all the way down on what I want it to take a picture of. So it's gonna snap exactly what I just told it to. And then we're gonna do that to all of them. So shift command four on a Mac, click and drag. Shift command four. And these will save to your computer. And your pictures. Okay, so that part is finished. I have the pictures of what I want to use. So we will go back to, let's see. Here we are, okay. So let me show you, oh, I didn't finish showing you how to post this. So we made our slides and we want to title it here. Vocabulary. Okay. So now it's created and I named it. It doesn't show that I named it here, but we did. I promise it'll show up the right way once we post it. So I, I don't need any extra instructions here. Once again, I can post to specific classes or specific students. I can assign a point value or make it ungraded. I can give it a due date. And I want to select my topic as Temple Grandin, so it will all file under the same place. I could create a rubric here. They even have a plagiarism button, which is helpful for essays. And this is a really important button. So, if you don't change this part, it usually automatically says students can view file. If you leave it as that, your students are not gonna be able to do anything to the assignment. They're just gonna be able to look at it. So if you want them to not mess anything up on it and not have to do anything with it, then you might want to use that. But otherwise you're gonna to wanna to change it. If you choose students can edit file, everyone is going to be able to edit the same document. So all of their work is going to get mixed up. And if you're doing group work or a single class activity, you might want to use that. But for the most, for the most part, I usually tell it to make a copy for each student. So everyone has their own assignment. And so that is something that you're probably going to want to do. And then we just click assign. Okay, so we see both of those here. So now we can move on to the next activity. So we're going to create a new assignment. And for this one, I'm gonna use slides again because I'm gonna show you something, a reason why I think that it's the best for this. And so this activity, we're going to call comparing inventors. We don't have it already created. If we did, we would choose add, but we don't. So we're gonna choose create. And then we're going to go to slides, just like we did last time. It's going to be blank, so we're going to click on it so that we can edit it. And we're going to call it comparing inventors again. And so if you notice, we took those screenshots of those pages and they are an eight and a half by 11 page, right? The normal piece of paper size. And that's not what this looks like. So we need to change it to look that way by going to file and then page setup. And this is how it's set currently. We want to customize that to be eight and a half by 11. And now it looks the way that we want it to look. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're actually going to, instead of pulling those in as pictures, 
we're going to actually set it as the background because students like to accidentally on purpose delete things off of your slides if it, they're not that way sometimes. And so this way they can't make it disappear from your slide. So we're going to click background and we're actually going to choose an image instead of a color this time. So we'll go to image. We're going to browse. I'm just going to click recent because I know it's going to be there. And our first one is this screenshot that we took. I'm going to choose that. It usually takes it a second to upload. Jocelyn, I'm going to interrupt you. Um, yes, we had one question. Okay. So would these okay. be like your daily assignments for a week? You know, if in your classroom you were doing it virtually? Yeah, this is uh, probably probably a week's worth. This would probably be like a unit. I don't, I'm not sure if they could do all of this in a day, but um, yeah, I would, I would create this as an assignment for them virtually. Does that answer the question? Thank you. Yes, I think it does. Okay, if, it, if not, tell them to go ahead and ask again if that didn't help. Um, okay, so we set the background, let's see, done. And so now I can't move this off the page. It's just set as the background. And so we, oh, that's funny. My, my picture's at the bottom of it. Um, we are going to make a new slide. So we're going to go to, let's see, insert new slide. And once again, I like to start the blank slate. So I just take all of that off of there and we're gonna click background again. We're going to choose an image, we'll go to browse, recents, and then our second screenshot is that one. And we're done. Okay, so now we have that in here. We can't move it, which is a good thing. The kids can't delete that off the page, but we need them to be able to type into it. So if you have older kids, they might be able to draw their own text boxes if some of the younger ones might not be able to do that. So we'll just click our text box button and draw it right in here. We might say type here, and then we can click on the outside of that box to copy it. Ooh. And we can paste it and drag them where we need them to go. And so I would do that for the rest of this and then I would keep making new slides and keep adding in those screenshots as the background picture and then inserting the text boxes. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to go ahead and finish that. Um, so we are finished with that guy. Let's go back and ho finish posting it. So even though it doesn't say, let's see. Yes, we named it. So even though it doesn't say right here that we named it, we already did. So it'll post just fine once we assign it. I can put instructions in here if I need to. Once again, I can assign to specific classes, specific students, change the point value. I can give it a due date and we want to change the topic to Temple Grandin and I need them to be able to have their own. So I'm going to make a copy for each student and I'm going to assign that. And then we have our third item here. So the next thing the next activity on this lesson is the flight zones. And you could do the exact same thing that I just showed you. You could take screenshots of this and put it into slides, set it as the background and put text boxes on it for this reading activity and response page. But I'm gonna show you another way that you might do it. It also involves taking a screenshot, but this time we only need a screenshot of the reading page. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now by clicking Shift-Command-4. 
drawing this over the sheet. And this time I want to create, I can either click quiz assignment because that will create a form, a blank form for me also. The second way you can do this is clicking assignment again, and then um, we'll title it, let's see. Who was that? Cattle flight thins, okay. And we wanna create, we don't have it prepared yet, so we're creating a form. Perfect, and we need to edit that. So I'm gonna tap on that, click on that. Cattle flight zones. I need to name it here too. Oh, it's gonna do it automatically for me. And I, we're gonna create pictures in this. This is basically a way that you can create a quiz. I'm gonna post that picture that I took here so that they can read it before they answer the questions. Jocelyn, we had yes, one person um, ask if you have YouTube videos because they love if you. I have. Aww, <laughs> so this you is the sweetest start, thing I've ever heard. You may need to start some how-to. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I don't have YouTube, but I really like to talk to people and help people. So listen, we can make it happen. Um, okay, so here's a picture and then I can add questions under this. But one thing I want to tell you is since I just created this as a form and I didn't click the quiz option that I showed you, it's not, it's not set up as a quiz as it is right now. So if that happens to you and you see if you use it with your kids and it's not working the way it's supposed to work, then that might be the problem. You might want to go to settings and then go to this quizzes tab and then turn this button on, make it a quiz. And then you have options to change things here. You can have it immediately release their grade, which I normally turn that off. I have it set for later. You can have them see their missed questions and correct answers. I don't usually always do that. And then also the point values. So those are some options for you. And then I could click this plus button here and then type the questions that they had. Let's see. The first one was, what is the main idea of the Cattle Flight Zones reading page? Ooh. Okay. Oh, question mark. That's a question. And so right now it's set up to be multiple choice. That doesn't make sense for the question that we're asking. So we could also change it to be check boxes or we can make it a drop down question. So we have lots of options here. For this one, it makes more sense for it to either be a short answer or a paragraph. So I'm gonna set it to be one of those. This button makes it either required or not required. I would always want them to be required probably so that they have to answer it. And then the other thing that's important on this little question box here is the answer key. You want to click that so that you can tell Google Forms how many points you want it to be worth. And you can also type in answer feedback here. If you choose the multiple choice option, you'll be able to tell, the, tell it the correct answer. So the only thing that's going to be able to self-grade in Google Classroom is if you create a form that either has is multiple choice has multiple choice questions or checkbox questions or something like that. But in this case, if you had, a, if you were doing a worksheet like this, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be able to self grade anyway, you would have to read through it. So it's just something to keep in mind. So there's that. And then I can just keep adding those questions by clicking this little plus sign and typing them in here, changing the format to what I need it to be. And so that's that. So that's one way you could 
And you could do what I showed you before this way too, whichever one you feel like works best for you and your class. And you could also make a vocabulary quiz from the activity that we did earlier in this as well. So you might want to make, put a definition of a word here, and then you could make it multiple choice and add all of your options in here. We would go to the answer key and tell it what the correct answer is. And then we also want to tell it how many points it's worth. So you have to do that for every question. So that's a form. And so we actually want to assign it now. We already named it. I do believe, yeah, we named it. And so even though it doesn't show that we named it here, we did do that. We can type extra instructions to them. And then all of our same options are here. The important one to us, I can put a random date, but we wanna make sure that we put it in the right spot so it doesn't get lost. And then I assign it. And then the last couple of things are, let's see, activity four is the, where they build the cattle chute. And so that's, if you're doing distance learning, that's not something they might be able to do if they don't have the materials for that. So one idea I thought of is you could create an assignment again and then create the content because we don't have it and just assign them a drawing. So they could, you wouldn't even have to do anything to this really. Gonna call it that for now. That's interesting. <laughs> and we're gonna leave it blank and we're going to make it so that each one has their own copy. And so when the students go into it, it'll pull up with a blank screen like this and they can go in and you, you could also do this in slides, but they can go in and use some of these connectors and lines and scribbly tools to design their own cattle shoot. So that's the thought. And then the last one on here is where they design their own t-shirt or Western shirt or Western scarf. And so you could take a screenshot of this like I showed you before and put it into slides. I'll show you just how to do that on this one really quickly. So I'm gonna, ins let's see, background. You wanna do background so they can't delete it off of your page. I'm gonna choose an image. I took a screenshot of this earlier, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. I would make a separate assignment for this, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna show it to you in the one I've already created. Okay. And so it looks a little squishy, so I might change the dimensions for this picture, but it'll work for the sake of what we're doing right now. And they can use the scribble tool and I might draw a heart on here. It's very beautiful. And I can change the color of that. I can make the lines darker so they can kind of just draw on it that way. So that's an option for a way that you could do that digitally. And I think that's about all that's in that. Um, a couple of extra things I wanna show you really quickly. You can, if you click Google Calendar, your student should also be able to access this it should show you the assignments and what days that they're due on. So that is something that, see it pops up right here, all of the things and the certain days that I want them to be done. And the other thing I wanted to tell you is today, I just went ahead and assigned everything. So my kids, if, if they were in this class, they would be able to see everything that I've already assigned. You also have the option when you create something to schedule it. So if I wanted to 
to create a week's worth of content, but I didn't want it to go out all on the same day, I could schedule it to go out on different days. And so I might roll out a different assignment every day. So that's a tool that you have at your to use for your advantage. So I think we're getting pretty close. We have about eight minutes left. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. If anyone has any more questions for um, Jocelyn, please type them in the Q&A. Let's take advantage of uh, her knowledge. She, Jocelyn, we are very impressed on our side with what you're doing. We love this and I am seeing great comments. So everyone take advantage of okay. the opportunity to ask her questions. I know it's kind of like drinking through from a fire hydrant. So, and I talk kind of fast and I'm trying to give you as much as possible. So I'm sorry if it's overwhelming you. Jocelyn, we did have one uh, question. Show us again how to edit the size of the, the page. So in Google okay. Slides, how do you change that? Okay, so let me see. So I'm gonna assign another slide. So you go to File and then Page Setup. And it automatically has this set, but you wanna customize that. So custom and then set it to a paper size. So eight and a half oop, by 11 and then apply that and it'll go ahead and change that for you. Awesome. Okay, I have a few more questions rolling okay. in. Uh, okay. Have you ever used Seesaw? I know some of the younger grades I've seen are possibly using that. Yeah, um, I, I used it a little bit my first year of teaching, but I was drowning in everything. And so I didn't get super in depth with it, but I know a lot of people use it and they really enjoy it. So I could help you figure it out if you needed me to. Would you be willing to share your email? so they can oh, ask yes. more questions. Yeah. Um, we um, can also put it in the chat if you're okay. fine with that or you can share it on yeah, your screen. Fine. I actually have, I was gonna share this too. So these are a few things that you can, where you can go to learn more if you want to. This is a website that has a breakdown of videos. It'll load all the way. So it kind of has like an index for specific topics if you're struggling um, with like how do I create a class I forgot how to do that so you can come here and click on this link and it'll show you how to do that so that's a good resource for you and Google actually has a teacher center where they have free training courses on how to use the things in G Suite and Google Classroom and so that could be helpful it's self-paced so you can go through it um, as quickly or as slowly as you need to. So that's something that might be helpful to you also. And then this is just, this probably has Seesaw on it, honestly, but this is a list of apps that you can use alongside Google Classroom. If you want to spruce things up and you feel like you're comfortable with the things that I showed you today, these are some other things you can bring in uh, to Google Classroom. So I do believe that they're going to send you a link to this somehow. Um, at some point in the future. So you'll be able to access this slide. And then this is my email. Awesome. Yes, we are. Um, to all the teachers, we will be putting out basically a Google folder uh, with all the information from all the sessions over our conference. So that should come out the first week of August. Um, I have a few more questions. So I'm going okay. to go ahead and ask those. Um, okay. If you wanted to have different formats of the content um, to be able to differentiate between students, what would be the best way to share the work? Would we just select by student rather than in the entire class? Yeah, I think that would probably be best. So if you created one to be a form and one to be a slide and they were different versions, I would just say assign, maybe just select most of the class because I want all, most of them to do this, but I want these two kids to do it this way instead because they, they maybe they can't type well or something like that. So I'm gonna have them draw to demonstrate their learning. So maybe I would assign a Google drawing to them specifically. So that's how I would probably do it that way, yeah. 
Okay. Um, also, I would like to know if this is user friendly for younger grades. Uh, they teach second grade and they're wondering if they would be able to navigate that. I, I think that they will. I know a lot of like our school district, they, our second grade is going to this as well. So second through fifth, we don't really have a choice. Like this is what we're doing, which I'm, I'm happy about because I'm, I'm comfortable with it, but I know it's hard when, when you haven't had as much experience. And so, um, I, I think that they could, they're capable of learning. They're capable of doing, of doing a lot. So I think that it would be fine. Um, Dana want, or somebody wants to know if you have had any training or if you just figured it out on your own. Oh, I haven't really had any training. I, I kind of just learned by messing up a lot. And so I learned pretty quickly when that they could, they can actually comment on their, each other's things and they weren't being really inappropriate, but I learned quite, pretty quickly, like probably we can't handle that. So we're going to turn that off. And like, there were some bumps in the road and you, you just figure out kind of what went wrong and how to move, move on from that. So, which our kids learn best that way too, by, by doing, making mistakes and fixing them. Okay. Um, and then have you ever used interactive headers? Um, somebody said they had used an interactive header uh, page for Google Classroom, but the links don't work. Okay. No. So like the, the banner page, the banner that goes across, I think that's what they're talking about. I haven't done that, but I, I'm, there are a lot of really good Facebook groups that you guys um, can look into and just search through Facebook groups and try to join some positive communities for things like this because people share all the time things that are already created and you could just take it and kind of adapt it and um, I've never used it but I've been kind of looking into it so so maybe this year will be the year. Um, I think that's it. I'm working on answering the other question. So There's okay. one more. Um, how did you cut or copy and paste the Western shirt and not the other stuff. If you can just tell them the two commands for the Mac or the PC. Got it. And I'm going to type that as well. Oh, okay. The Mac was uh, shift command four is Mac and then snipping tool, S-N-I-P-P-I-N-G is Windows. So that's a screenshot. And then you set it as the background. And there's one more thing. They have something called the Guardian Summary on Google Classroom that I haven't used yet, but I will probably use this year, especially if we end up going to virtual learning. And it's something that your parents and guardians can sign up for to get a summary about what's been completed and not completed by each student. So that might be something that you might want to use. <laughs> 